See, for a lot of landscape photographers, I think it can be quite tricky to share the story of your images. You can just write it down, but so many people skim over the text and just look at the image. Where one of the reasons I started this YouTube channel was to share those stories about how tricky some of those images are to capture. And I have an idea for, for a series, for a project, for like a little body of work I really want to develop and, and work towards and work on. And part of that idea is to set a camera up doing a time lapse from just before sunset to well into the night and then combine all those images together into one eight hours worth of photography in one single shot with star trails, with nice light at sunset, with that whole best of everything. So what I don't like about a lot of astro star trail work is normally the landscape, the foreground, is quite the silhouette. Well, I like the, the higher end, the professional side of those images when there's still a lot more light and still a lot more detail in the foreground of an astronomical photo. And my way of combining all that together is to set the camera up without touching it, leave it for an incredibly long time and then put it all together later on in post-production. But also an advantage from this was, was is that it would give me a time lapse, uh, some video, some passing of time to share with viewers to show how long I left that camera there for without touching it and you've really got to put a lot of time and effort and thought into that one shot to capture it perfectly. So in this video we're going to cover off everything I've learnt so far this month from trying to master that whole process together. So first up, for my first location I have a church that I shot years ago and I haven't been back to since and I've really been meaning to. I got there, I asked the neighbour if they mind if I jump the fence a little bit just to have my camera closer to the church and I set my time lapse up and underway. Now I learned a couple of things from this process. First of all I shot this image at sunset with the sun setting behind the church and while that did add quite a nice light to the windows of the church, it didn't light up the church as, as naturally and as dynamic as I would have liked initially. Also when I did this I sh shot with the images focused or the camera focused on the church to start with and then when it got to night time I refocused for the stars. However this whole process brought up a number of issues. Number one is battery life. It just didn't last that whole way through from 5am to 2am. That's too many shots, too long of a shooting for one single battery but I can work on that. The next one is that, that transition from daytime to nighttime, that refocusing, that rechanging shots. I bumped the camera, it didn't make for a smooth time-lapse video. Overall though, the photo in the end worked out okay, but I've got a lot of things to work on. So to get around my battery issue was easy. And now I initially thought I might buy the battery grip for the Fujifilm X-T4. That lets me have two extra batteries in it and I don't have to change or bump anything. However, this is not that cheap. And instead I decided to go with a power bank, just a 10,000 milliamp external battery pack. This here. With a USB to USB-C cord plugged straight into the camera to charge it and this little small rig plus a Manfrotto, I think that's a cell phone tripod adapter, with that attached to the top of my camera as a way to have it sitting there charging my camera the whole time. Now this here from 10,000 milliamp hours, I can also run a fan off it if I need to to help prevent condensation on the front of the lens and I managed to get six hours out of that with this still being half charged and my in-camera battery being fully charged. So 10,000 milliamps will do me all night, including running a fan. However, as I came up with this idea and didn't test it, when I was out shooting my second location, this, this lighthouse, once again from sunset all the way through to the morning, I didn't practice this. And when as I plugged that power bank in, my time lapse stopped and I had to change a couple of settings. For those that want to use a power bank to charge your camera while doing a time lapse, I'd recommend these settings. In the setup menu under connection settings and connection mode, I needed to change it to USB raw conversion, as all the other options either didn't charge my camera or stopped the time lapse. And so all this fiddling with settings as I'm trying to work that out out in the field while time lapse is underway, unfortunately caused too much of a pause, too much of a break, and once again ruined my time lapse. Also from shooting the lighthouse, combining all those star trail images together with that bright light from the lighthouse for as far as my knowledge is at the moment didn't quite work together. So while I still got an interesting time lapse, I have a little bit of a jump, it's not smooth enough and the final image isn't quite perfect yet. But that's alright, we'll come back to this location another day. Also if you're using the X-T4 make sure you do have USB power supply turned on as well, otherwise yeah, your power bank's just not going to charge your camera at all. But overall the big tip from this location or set this all up and practice your power supply and time lapse first before you're halfway through a shot.
Okay, so location number three. This was just on a hill, and I actually planned this hill quite a bit by using an app called Photo Pills. And what I did is I hoped this hill, well, I was informed this hill would line up with the Southern Galactic Pole, hoping that the all the stars or the planet would make the images, the stars look like they're revolving around the top of the mountain that's in, in the center-ish of this shot. And unfortunately, Photo Pearls wasn't 100% reliable to this, and that galactic spinning core, that galactic, sorry, southern pole, is just off to the side of that shot. But that's okay, things were still working. See, one big issue with doing a holy grail time lapse, that transition from daytime to nighttime, is settings. So a lot of people sit there and they manually change their settings and they sit by the camera for hours. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be able to set my camera up, maybe check on it once or twice, but more so just enjoy the experience, the evening, the stars, not have to commit so much of my time and make it frustrating and boring to do. And my solution to doing this was having an automatic shutter speed. However, another issue that I ran into on my third location was the interval between frames. See, during the day, I had the interval set to a photo every 30 seconds. And this is all right, because I'm, I'm, I'm not in great rush and in any great need of content, though this would change a little bit depending on the speed that any clouds are moving. 30 seconds does daytime absolutely fine. However, to combine all those star trails together at nighttime, and as the shutter speed, the shot ends up being 30 seconds long for each photo, I only want a one second gap. So I needed to work out a, a timing, a way to transition from daytime interval to nighttime interview interval. And working out when to do this was a little bit tricky. Credit back to Photo Pills though, it really did help tell me when full galactic twilight starts, when it is absolute full nighttime. And easy within maybe 10, 15 minutes of that, my shutter speed goes from like say a couple of seconds all the way to 30 seconds. It is a very drastic change, which doesn't happen at sunset, it happens far closer to nighttime. If you're unsure about this, there are other apps I'm sure that will inform you, but I'm using photo pills to work out those definite changes in nighttime, daytime, brightness in the sky. But my issue was, when I changed from a shot every 30 seconds to a shot every one second, I didn't have this timing mastered down. And as I did it too early, my camera started going click, 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 and it really sped up my time lapse, and it hit my memory card's buffer far too fast. So my time lapse stopped. As I'm trying to fiddle and change these settings, I've bumped it a little bit, but I've, the point is I ruined that smooth transition. So once again, while the overall time lapse works okay, there is a clear jump in the middle of this time lapse, just as I've edited out some of those poor frames that went too, far too quick, and it's, it's not quite perfect. Overall, the position of that the spinning center of that core isn't as good as I would like, but the bigger issue was that changing from 30 second shots to one second shot. Every single one of these projects was a learning experience. The second issue with this location is also ISO. So when I'm shooting during the day, I want my ISO to be ISO 200, 160, near perfect, so I have the maximum possible detail and quality out of my shots as I can get. However, as it turns into nighttime, I need the ISO to change up to 1600, 3200, just to expose for the stars correctly and allow me to get enough detail during the night. But when do I change this? I ended up changing it very close to the astronomical twilight, but if you do this suddenly and, and, and in the wrong way, once again you get this extreme jump in exposure as your shutter speed, my automatic shutter speed, tried to compensate for this, and it didn't work out seamlessly. So for location number four, I have another solution. And that solution is to do automatic shutter speed and automatic ISO. Now when doing more and more automatic settings when doing a time lapse, you will end up getting like a flickering in your shot. So I'm using a flicker reduction tool in DaVinci Resolve Pro, the paid for version, to help reduce this flickering. However, at location number four, which was at Castle Point near Masterton, New Zealand, which is a beautiful location, I didn't still master that transition from 30 seconds to one second. And as I did that, it's, Working out when to do that was a real struggle. So instead of going to all these great locations, I tried to simplify things right down, and I just started practicing around home. And so if you want to learn how to do this holy grail time lapse, I recommend practicing at home. Your shots don't have to be perfect, but it makes it far easier to set your camera up, pop inside for a few hours, pop back out and see how you went, rather than driving for hours like I did. So practice shot number four, five, whatever up to, this is literally just at a gate behind my house. So I set the camera up with automatic shutter speed, 
I think it was Aperture F2.2 and ISO 1600, maybe 3200 for that sunset as the night came out. And that transition from daytime to nighttime was fantastic. However, once the moon rose and nighttime started, I started getting this little bit of a pulse to my shot. So as my shutter speed changed from say 30 seconds to 27 seconds and back and forth. And it wasn't much, but it did cause this odd pulse at nighttime, which I haven't experienced before. And I have used automatic shutter speed and automatic ISO before. However, this time it didn't work quite, but the transition is better. So I have one final solution. So for my last shot, I set a camera up once again, just near my house, automatic shutter speed, aperture of f2.8, f2.2, whatever is required for your scene, and automatic ISO. And then maybe 10, 15 minutes before astronomical twilight, which is roughly two hours after sunset, I went out and I watched my camera. And that automatic ISO eventually bumps up to what you set your max to, say automatic 1600 in this case. And I sat there watching the shutter speed. And eventually, and I was waiting for it to get to 30 seconds long, because the moon was so bright this night, it stopped at 15 seconds. And now you can run for quite a while at that, what automatic thinks is best, but as soon as it stops changing, as soon as it sits around a consistent mark, I flick my camera over to timer mode rather than automatic shutter speed, with a timer of, in this case, 15 seconds, and I set my interval to one seconds rather than 30 seconds. And so this was my transition point, so I only had to touch my camera once. And the final result, is a very smooth transition from daytime to nighttime, one quick little touch of two settings, and then once again I am away with a smooth nighttime time lapse. Now I do end up with a little bit of flickering in the shot just from the cloud passing over, but the pulsing I'm hoping has disappeared, and it has been a very long month. Every single one of these shots took eight to 10 hours to shoot, including planning, setting up, and just leaving it there and practicing at those different times of astronomical, close to astronomical twilight to find out when to change settings. And I understand this might be very complicated for some of you to understand, but hopefully it's been enjoyable for you to watch. If you have questions about any of this, please let me know down in the comments below. If you'd like to support what I'm doing here, please just like the video, subscribe to the channel. It's so simple to do. Or if you'd like to do a little more, please check out my website. Once again, link down in the description below and you could buy a print to help support me sharing more content like this. But as always guys, thank you so much for following along. And until next time, I'll catch you next time. Yeah.